Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about Packer, which is a DevOpsy tool that is used to build images. And what I mean by building images is it helps you make like virtual machine blobs, I guess. So like, um, you know, spinning up a virtual box for local development or building a um, base application image for your cloud provider or stuff like that. Um, I'm going to walk you through kind of the getting started with Packer. Um, and I'll, I'll show you a tutorial that you can look at as well that I'm gonna be loosely following. I'm gonna explain one Packer file and then we're gonna run it in the background while I'm explaining it because it's gonna take a while because it's, it's kind of a slow process. Um, but what I'm gonna be following today is getting started with Packer, um, which is this link here. So I'm basically gonna be following this. We're gonna be using a template that I already wrote. I'm gonna show you what it does. Um, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna step through all this, and I'm gonna show you what you need to clean up at the end if you're if you're done with this. So I have already written a Packer template here. I'm gonna show, tell you what each of these lines of code does, um, but first we're gonna run it because it takes forever. <laughs> so first we're gonna do Packer validate, just to make sure that this file is correct and it doesn't print much, but exits non-zero if it's success, it's successful, and we're gonna do Packer build ami.json. And what I'm gonna be using today is the Amazon EBS builder. And Packer supports a bunch of different builders. Uh, this one happens to be the one for Amazon. So I've already set up an AWS account. I've already authenticated with my uh, AWS command line. So I'm already set up with AWS. That's why I didn't have to do anything there. Also, I installed Packer beforehand. Uh, so you would have to do that as well. But we're gonna be using the Amazon EBS builder. Uh, this spins up a machine, runs some commands on it, and then creates a snapshot from it. And then that snapshot can be used to boot other instances later. So you know, maybe you have an application that needs a particular set of software installed. And so you would pre-build an image with that software. Uh, and then you don't have to install that every single time you run your machine. Um, but yeah, so I'm building in US East 1. You have to tell it what region you're building in. Um, I'm just doing that. You also have to tell it your authentication. Um, and so I have set that up as well. Interestingly enough, these variables aren't actually in my environment. I just have my uh, AWS command line authenticated. So I don't know if this is super necessary. I didn't experiment with removing it, but it doesn't hurt to put it, I guess. Uh, but these these seem to be optional. Uh, the one time where these are not optional is when you're using an assumed role. So this is something that you might want to look out for. But anyway, I, I, I don't actually have anything special set up to make this work. It just kind of works. Uh, the first thing is we're going to give our AMI a name. This is going to say what the resulting image name is. And so uh, we're going to be looking at the, you know, EC2 management console later. These are two AMIs that I've built earlier. These are for pre-commit CI specifically, um, where I've named, you know, my AMI is named runner and it also has the git revision, uh, or if the git revision is dirty, it has dash dirty here. Um, but we'll actually see our image show up here later, but... For now, we're gonna keep that off screen. Uh, but yeah, your AMI name will be what ends up in that AMI name field there. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. There's some limitations, like I think it has to be less than 255 characters or something like that. Um, but you know, doesn't <laughs> doesn't really matter what you name it here. Uh, we already talked about these fields. We already talked about the type. Uh, you can also have multiple builders here. So if maybe I wanted to build a local development machine that looked the same as my Amazon AMI. Uh, I could also use, I think there's a virtual box provider. Let's see, Packer virtual box provider. I think there's also a Docker provider too, which like, it's not really good for building Docker images, but you could if you really wanted to. Yeah, there's a uh, virtual box ISO. I've used the OVF format before. Uh, this is what I used when I was at Lyft to build the development machines. Um, but yeah, you can, you can use as many of these builders as you want and they each builder has their own set of settings here. Uh, the next thing that we see here is we are sourcing from a base AMI. This you can kind of think of if you're in like a Docker land as your base image. In our case, we are doing some particular filters here. Uh, these seem to be like the, the current standard, which is like always use HVM and always use EBS. EBS is Elastic Block Storage. Uh, I don't remember what HVM stands for. It's like their, their hypervisor type. Um, and you can select using a set of filters. Uh, the filters that we're gonna be using today is we're gonna be looking for an Ubuntu minimal image. This basically just makes it a little bit faster to start. 
because uh, it's it's smaller and has fewer things running. And you can use wildcards in this name. So uh, the way these images actually get named is there's like a date stamp in here somewhere. We don't really care about the date stamp, so we're just gonna star that out. Uh, I put a star here to make this short enough so it fit on the screen. There's actually some other stuff in here that says like HVM slash EBS or whatever. Uh, but since we're filtering based on HVM and EBS, we don't need that data that's in there. Um, I'll show you another AMI later where I've actually filled out more of this information because <laughs> I want a very specific type here. Uh, the other thing you have to do when you're sourcing an AMI filter is select an owner account ID. Um, I've looked up this account ID, and this account ID is the one for Canonical. Uh, you guys, account ID, this one. Um, yeah, so you can see here. <laughs> I don't want to log in. Uh, cached. Yay, bypass the login wall. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you can see that this AMI is owned by Canonical, which is a second ID, and Canonical is the, the people that make Ubuntu. Um, and we're setting most recent true. Uh, they publish lots of versions of this, and again, like their version by the, the date stamp in the AMI name. Uh, and we just ask for the most recent one here so that it selects, you know, <laughs> the, the newest AMI. We don't want to build from a potentially old one, which may have packages which are, you know, security vulnerable or, or otherwise. Uh, and I think Ubuntu publishes this about once every couple weeks or so. Um, I'm surprised this hasn't progressed forward. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's uh, that's the builders. Oh, also you have to set the SSH username. This one you'll look up in your base image and match it from that. Uh, in my case, all of the Ubuntu images ship with Ubuntu as their default SSH username. Um, if you're working with a different operating system, or sorry, with a different, I guess you could work with a different operating system. You could build a a Windows image if you really wanted to. Uh, but if you're working with a different flavor or distribution or operating system, then you would figure out what SSH username belongs there. Uh, note here, oh no, <laughs> this failed, so. <laughs> oh, gotta love live demos. Well, well, we'll run another copy of this. Uh, Packer build amon.json, and we'll hope it succeeds. If not, I'll cut the video and then you know, at the end, we'll we'll talk about what it did, and I'll go over all the output. Um, that's weird. I've never seen this error before. <laughs> that's what you get for live demos, though. Um, oh, I forgot to talk about the instance type. So I usually set this to T2 Micro. T2 Micros are available in the free tier, so they're a good choice for, you know, just trying stuff out. Um, I also usually find that building an AMI, the instance type doesn't matter all that much, and, like, even the cheap ones can build a, a decent AMI without, you know... It's not really much of a memory speed trade-off here. Uh, now, granted, this only has, I believe, one gigabyte of memory and one processor, and so, you know, you're you're potentially you're potentially not having, you know, a, as fun a time on this this tiny box. Um, oh, good, it's working this time. Thank goodness. Uh, the last part of this is the provisioners, and what I think of when I think of provisioners, um, I've only used shell ones here, but there's a whole bunch of other ones. Uh, what provisioners are is they're a way to modify the uh, machine to set up the state that you want. Um, this might be like adding files to it or running commands on it or stuff like that. Uh, in my case, and what I usually recommend putting this command first and last, uh, this du-xhs slash, uh, this just shows how much free space or how much space is being used by the, the entire file system. And I usually find this is a good way to, you know, kind of make sure mentally that you're producing an image of about the size that you expect. Um, and so this will print out like a human readable disk size, um, which you can see in this output. Uh, here we started with an image that's 874 megs. Um, the next thing that we'll do is, uh, in this case, we're just gonna run a silly command. We're gonna uh, run apt update and then install a package. We're gonna install Kause, which I just did this for demonstration purposes, Kause is kind of a silly package that just you know, prints out an ASCII art of a cow. Uh, and then, you know, we also did a command here to show that Kause worked. And then finally, we snapshot the disk size usage at the end. And you'll see here, we were able to install Kause, and then we ran Kause, and it says, it works, cool. Uh, now, one thing you'll note here is, I actually did something a little bit poorly here. Uh, we started with about 870 megabytes, and we installed two tiny packages. <laughs> Like, yeah, we downloaded, like, 30 kilobytes of packages to set this up. 
Yeah, we, we should have used, you know, a, a couple hundred kilobytes more of disk space. But you'll notice our disk size ballooned to 1.1 gigs. And this is actually a problem in Docker as well. Whenever you're doing apt update, you usually want to follow it up with apt get clean and uh, removing the temporary apt metadata. Otherwise, you're potentially ballooning your image. And so that's another reason why, you know, setting these commands here are useful. Uh, while this finishes up, I'm going to show you the AMI that I use for pre-commit CI, or at least some of the code for it. Pre-commit CI, pre-commit CI, uh, packer ami.json. So this is kind of similar to how that works. <laughs> I have some other settings here, which I won't go over. Um, and this is the stuff that I was talking about before, where I'm storing stuff out. Stuff out. I've also changed what type of volume it uses. So GP3 are the latest generation at the time of recording of the general purpose SSDs, and they're much faster and much cheaper. Uh, but you'll notice here that I, again, have those same disk size uh, commands here. And instead of using a bunch of shell commands here, I have a single shell command. Uh, well, first I add some files, and then I have a single shell command that runs my install. And so you can see, instead of using inline, I'm now using script. And if we look at packer install, it's a shell script that has a bunch of steps to it. And so this is kind of what you could think of as like your Docker file instruction stuff here. And uh, most of the stuff here is like uh, set up some files and then run Puppet. And Puppet, uh, I did a video on Puppet. I'll link that in the description. Puppet is a way to ensure software is installed in a particular way on the box. I also run tests on this just to make sure that the image is built to what I expect. Um, there's also some tests that are sprinkled in line here. Like I make sure that CML is importable because um, if I'm using slow YAML, then this, this uh, AMI is potentially slower than it could be. Uh, but like I'm setting up a Python environment here. Uh, here's where I delete a bunch of stuff at the end that I no longer need to shrink down my image size. So I installed Ruby at the beginning to run Puppet, but I don't need Ruby, Ruby anymore. I don't need the dev headers of Python to install C packages. I don't need a C compiler. I don't need uh, the C compiler tools that come with it. Uh, and then I also purge a bunch of caches and a bunch of other stuff. So like uh, this is some of the apt metadata. Uh, this is also some of the apt metadata, and again, like where this this extra you know, almost 300 megabytes of stuff came from. But anyway, that's Packer. Uh, now that this AMI has finished, we should be able to see it in this view here. So if we refresh this, you'll see that my AMI has now started here. And if we go to make a new instance, we can launch an instance using this. Oh, go away. <laughs> I was doing some stuff earlier. Um, and we can go to my AMIs, and now we can select this AMI and boot an instance which has, you know, Kausei already installed on it. And you might use this for your auto scaling groups or other stuff like that. But that's that's AMIs, and that's uh, Packer. Um, if you want to clean up the stuff that we built from this, um, because the snapshot actually costs money, so uh, it's not much; it's it's pennies. But you'll you'll probably want to clean those up afterwards. And the way to do that is to go to AMIs. You'll check this AMI and you'll do actions deregister. Uh, and that's the first step. So the AMI is actually free, but the snapshot is not. So then you'll go to snapshots and you'll find the one we just created, which should be the 31st. And we'll do actions delete. And so that'll free up all of the resources that were created uh, during this run here. Uh, everything else that it temporarily creates, it cleans up. So you don't have to do anything manual. Um, but yeah. That's, um, that's getting started with Packer. Um, hopefully this was interesting. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.